Hi folks, how you doing? Thank you so much for joining us on the Evitz Model Shop YouTube channel. Today I'd like to go over a car that absolutely is one of my favorite offerings the Traxxas Corporation has. You guys may know if you're one of the people who follows this channel or maybe knows us from our Instagram account that I'm definitely a fan of Nitro RC. I like the vibe, I like the fun, the kind of challenge of it and everything. I'm not into the whole arguing about what's better, Nitro or Electric, so don't start with me. All right. Um, I like the Jado 3.3. So we're going to go over this one today. This is a brand new one out of box, never been driven, never been messed with or nothing. We'll have a look at that one and while we do, let's go over really quick about where the Jado 3.3 can trace its roots because just like everything, it didn't come from nothing. So the Jado 3.3 is a rear wheel drive nitro powered stadium truck and whether you were there or not in the mid 1990s, it's important to know that as far as something like this is concerned, that's basically where the idea of this comes from. The Jado, like we talked about, is a nitro stadium truck is in keeping with this kind of cold war that a lot of companies, if you could call it that, had going on at the time. Now, in 1992, Traxxas released the Nitro Hawk, which was both Traxxas's first Nitro RC car offering and their first Nitro Stadium truck. Same as a Nitro Stadium truck because in 1992, that's all anybody wanted to have. That was around the time associated RC10 GTs and low CX trucks were tearing it up on tracks everywhere. And Nitro Power was the thing to have if you wanted to develop any real power because brushless power systems hadn't been invented yet. So skip forward to 1997, Traxxas releases the .15 motor. And to go together with that release, they released the Nitro Rustler. So the Nitro Rustler is a little bit, well, actually a lot more rugged design than the, uh, than the Traxxas Nitro Hawk was. And it took the .15 a little bit better. A couple years down the road when the 2.5 was released, the Nitro Rustler got the 2.5 treatment. And in 1998, they kind of split off into the Traxxas Nitro Sport and the Traxxas Nitro Rustler. Okay, sorry, this is a little hard to keep track of, but stick with me, we'll get through it, all right? So, around 2004, every .15 car besides the Nitro Sport and I think the Stampede at that time got the 2.5 treatment or the 2.5R treatment. And in 2005, which brings us to this one, the Jado was released. The Jado was originally released with the Traxxas 2.5 engine, and in 2006, 3.3 Traxxas engine was released, which is what the new Jados are, and basically all the larger or more powerful Traxxas cars are equipped with now. The 3.3 engine is a really good engine, it revs high, and Traxxas engineering is pretty precise, so this two-speed transmission is geared really closely to what this engine can put out RPMs-wise. It's a really cool platform, the Jado is. It comes with these tires, these are called Anaconda tires. They're pretty hard compounds, so they'll last a long time, but on the downside, the handling could be a little bit better, but they do have a long life on them. Well, and you can see here the battery mounted in the back, everything like that. It has plastic drive shafts, but they're pretty rugged. It's a good car. I like it a lot. I thought this would be a good opportunity to kind of show off a stock one and see where that's at. And now that we've looked at this one, I'm going to go ahead and put the body on this one and set it over to the side. And again, for people who know us well, any platform that I like, one of the things I like about it is kind of some open-endedness and aftermarket support. So this is our shop Jado. This Jado particular one belongs to me. It's seen some action as I'm sure you can tell. And the reason it's so customized is when it came to us, it was an absolute piece of junk. It was in the bottom of a big Rubbermaid tote, no wheels and tires, broken A-arms. I remember the uh, rear differential and it was blown up. But I'd always wanted a Jado, so we went ahead and went through it, got everything spruced up, and got this working again. It had no body at the time, so we kind of did our own thing with it. I chose to go with sort of a road warrior sort of body on there and I decked it out to look like a, like a Brotherhood of Nod vehicle from the old Command and Conquer series if anybody's familiar with that. I'm a big fan of that franchise so I thought this would be a really cool opportunity to incorporate that. So when you look at the body you can see it has, by the way the body is a bow link body originally and now it's repopped by a company called RJ Speed. It's intended for a Pro Mod 110 scale on-road car but they're a nice long wheelbase they can be cut to fit stadium trucks, short course trucks, monster trucks they're a really cool versatile body if you're looking for this sort of a sort of a vibe. The crate in the back is because I never cut the wing. It's a Pro Mod funny car, so it's supposed to have like a downforce wing in the back. I just painted it up to look like a box. And before I destroyed all the stuff, it actually looked pretty nice and had straps that went down on it and everything. But after some rollovers and monstrous wheelies, which these cars are famous for, especially with grippy tires like these Proline Badlands that it's running right now, it can really pull some serious wheelies. This is a styrene piece that's kind of detailed to look like metal. The Jado does have working lights. 
I used a common sense RC light bar and cut the lights off and mounted them individually around on the body. And there's a tail light too. It's back here kind of off to one side like an, like an old school off-road vehicle tail light. I just used a little bit of clear red to do the, the red lens on there. So those common sense light kits are real versatile for things like that. This piece here is just a piece of a, a soda can that's folded over, doubled over, and bolted to the top of the roof with some small hardware. The rest of the body is pretty much how you would see it, but I cut the wheel while it's bigger, obviously, to accommodate the suspension. And the suspension is kind of raked downward in the front and lifted in the back to give it a more aggressive stance. It's mostly a display car in the shop, but I do use it, and it really is a lot of fun. So we can go over this and see what we got going on so far as the mods go. Most noticeably, and right off the bat, you can see that it runs a OS21 TM. So this is an engine that was designed for uh, Traxxas monster trucks, a drop-in replacement for um, Revo 3.3s and T-Max 3.3s where you might want to put something with a little more power. I think it took a little bit of extra work to get this to fit in here, but it wasn't a terrible undertaking. Um, the main thing was trying to find a header that would work for it. So I was able to get this header, I believe, off of an HPI Nitro MT. That's what I used. This is a stock exhaust. Seems to work pretty well. It's important to keep in mind that the T-Max 3.3 is a .18 as far as displacement is concerned. And this is a .21. So displacement-wise, they are pretty close to each other. There's not a huge difference. This motor tends to put out more bottom-end torque. And, of course, the 3.3 revs higher. Which is uh, one of the things that I would do with this if I had it to do over again. Would probably be a single-speed conversion with a larger pinion gear. To kind of eliminate the problem that you have with the awkward shift point when you start running an engine that doesn't run in the in the RPM range that the transmission was originally designed for. This is a hot racing part. It's a double stacked stainless steel disc and it has carbon fiber pads. It looks cool and it helps improve the stopping ability of the Jado which is really the only weak attribute that it has. It's a great handler, lightweight car with absolutely plenty of power on tap, no problems there. Stopping it can be a little hairy sometimes. And even though it's got a lot of bounce in the back with the way the suspension is set up and a lot of dive in the front, since of course it's rear wheel drive and it's only rear wheel braking, this uh, extra contact area with this modified brake made a, made a pretty good difference. So far as hot racing goes, the internals of the rear end are also hot racing. It has all hardened steel gears, hardened steel idler gear in the rear end, and the diff are all hot racing to make sure it can stand up to the extra power. These are Traxxas steel drive shafts. And you'll notice that all the suspension links, both in the rear and in the front, and the steering links are aluminum. Those are also Traxxas parts. The Jado comes equipped from the box with sway bars. The stock sway bars are still installed. I adjusted the end links a little bit, but not much. The reason they're black is I stripped them. So I took the white off of there because I didn't think it looked too good with the body. All right. The shocks are GTR aluminum shocks. So... They are GTR shocks, the car comes with GTR shocks, but they're the plastic versions. I decided to equip this with the aluminum versions. It also has an aluminum bell link inside the steering there. I decided to equip it with that mod because I did just about everything you can do to this. It uses a high-tech steering servo that I had laying around. I just put that in because I thought it'd be cool. And I used a waterproof throttle servo. I think it was um, the, the base, base Traxxas standard size servo that it came with. And this is a 2056, so that's like a steering servo out of a Rustler or whatever you have. Definitely has ample power, especially when it comes time to cram those brakes down, and that's why I'd replaced it. I wanted a little bit of extra pulling power for the brakes. The chassis on this is also aftermarket. This is a 7075 T6 chassis, significantly lighter and stronger than the stock chassis. When this car came to us, it had RPM arms in the front and back. I switched them back to stock because I wanted a little bit of extra rigidity, and even though they don't have the flexibility, the handling is much more predictable than it was with the RPM hardware. Um, the battery pack has been relocated from back at the back of the car here over into the center for a more neutral weight distribution and that kind of improved the, the tendency of this car to just run with the front wheels off the ground constantly, which it was pretty bad with the battery back here. It's honestly, it's still pretty bad, but bad in a more manageable way and in a way that's fun. It's a distinctive kind of attribute to this car that has a tendency to do that. Now, a lot of people ask me how I mounted these wheels and tires on a Jado. It's kind of a difficult thing to do because they come equipped with bearing in wheel style wheels in the front. But I'm going to go grab us a 7mm wrench and I'll take these off. And for you Jado guys out there, I'll go over how I made this happen. Just a second. And we're back. We got our trusty 7mm here. These are dynamite tools. They're pretty cool. I like their uh, open-ended wrenches, whatnot, whatever you got, hex driver. They're good. Here we go. So let me just go ahead and take this guy off. There's your super trick, rasped aluminum wheel nut, best mod out there for the price. At least you won't be losing wheel nuts. Obviously, I'm being semi-facetious, but now that I'm thinking about it, it's actually kind of cool. Whatever. So, 
Well, we're on the subject here. You'll see that this is a short course wheel and tire. It's got the short, um, like the low profile sidewall in the, in the rear facing side. And it's a beadlock. It's a Proline beadlock, F11 style. And uh, I switched this out to the, the short course style wheels instead of the stadium truck wheels because I just liked the dimensions of them on the chassis better, especially with that body. I thought it looked cool. So back to what we were talking about, Jado guys. This is my recipe personally for mounting hex wheels on a Jado. Now, I've seen a lot of people where they use a steering block and a caster block from a rustler, both in aluminum. What I did here is actually a better setup because it keeps the aspect ratio between the upper control link and the A-arm closer to what it was stock, and it really drastically reduces bump steer. The bump steer you're going to be experiencing with that just rustler front-end component swap is drastic. So with this one, you don't really have to worry about that. But this does take some doing. So with the stock wheel, like we talked about, it's bearing in wheels, so you're not going to be able to run a hex. That's your hex right there, obviously. And without that hex, you're not going to be able to put anything back into here because that runs the hex. They do not make bearing in wheel stuff for a, a lot of these designer rims that you're going to want to get to customize your stuff. All right. So what I did was I took the aluminum steering block aftermarket part that Traxxas makes for the Jado. And if you look over here, Steve, cameraman Steve is with us today. We always appreciate him. What I had done was milled out the back of that steering block right there with a grinder and a Dremel to make room for the new steering block there to articulate so the caster block is actually milled out. And the steering angle that you can get with that setup is really extreme. It's a lot of fun on this car. You can get real tail happy and have a great old time with it. Now if you'll notice, I did use a Traxxas Rustler, Traxxas Bandit, whatever you got steering block on here, the anodized red part you see there. But it required spacing at the top and bottom, so that was achieved with these two Teflon washers. They're about two and a half millimeters, two millimeters thick, and that keeps it nice and solid in there. And also, the pin that the caster block is designed for that's on the Jado is too big to fit inside of the Rustler steering block. So that was put on a drill press, and the Rustler steering block was drilled out to accommodate the pin that comes in the Jado caster block. I believe that pin is three and a half maybe four millimeters I could be wrong but this has to be drilled out in order to accommodate that pin then everything else is put back in just like you're doing a Jado you uh, re-lengthen these steering linkages here to accommodate it and get your uh, get your steering and your toe in the way you want it and you are good to go once you do that you will be able to run hex wheels on a Jado without the heinous bump steer that is a byproduct of running that rustler hardware for your steering block and caster block so I hope that answers some questions for the people out there. More, more often than not, and almost every time I have somebody come through here who is a Jado owner, they ask how I mounted these wheels and tires on a Jado. So now you know, not keeping any secrets around here. Takes a little bit of doing, like I said, but don't be intimidated by it. If you have any questions about how to do it, that's probably the most intriguing modification, in my opinion, that this car has. So you can reach out to me. I'll give you the specifics, whatever it is you might want. And if you have any comments or questions about how this was done, what kind of parts are on it, the availability of those parts, or uh, any other kind of build that you might have going on, reach out to us and let us know. We'd be happy to hear from you. Thank you so much for joining us, and have a great day. Take care.